Today we want to talk about suburethral diverticulum. First of all, trying to describe what a diverticulum is, basically, once you understand that, it kind of makes it simple. If this represents the bladder and this represents the urethra, um, when there is an outpouching in the urethra, that tends to consist of both a mucosal and a fascial component. This is typically the diverticulum. It tends to occur more commonly in the third to six decades of life and uh, may affect anywhere from one to six percent of the population. Uh, there's some controversy of where the uh, diverticulum actually comes from. Most people think uh, that it comes from the periurethral glands along the sides of the urethra. Certainly such causes as uh, urinary tract infections or recurrent infections uh, may be more of the common causes. Uh, it tends to be seen more in African Americans, probably up to six times as common in Afro Americans, um, but also secondary to uh, trauma as well as uh, periurethral injections uh, which uh, are tend to be seen or tend to be found after uh, trying to treat intrinsic sphincter deficiency. Probably when you start to think about the presentation uh, there's nothing like the three D's. Uh, this tends to consist of uh, dysuria, dyspareunia, and dribbling. Now as far as symptoms uh, we also see complaints of uh, recurrent urinary tract infection along with urinary urgency, urinary frequency, pelvic pain, and maybe even some uh, voiding dysfunction. And, and some of the patients, in fact up to 20 percent, they may be asymptomatic. Atypical presentations may actually include hematuria or difficulty with emptying such as retention. When starting to evaluate the patient, uh, certainly with any patient, you want to start with the H&P. And in the history and physical, you want to ask about previous diverticulum. Certainly you want to examine the patient suburethrally uh, for any kind of cystic or firm mass in the anterior vaginal wall. You certainly want to, to palpate or, or, or maybe milk the urethra to see if there is some type of discharge. Look for any kind of dilated glands or, or uh, any problems with the skein's gland or abscess. And uh, in discerning these um, anatomy-wise, certainly a skein's glands uh, abscesses can be confused, uh, but typically skein's glands abscesses uh, will uh, distort or um, uh, the distal urethral meatus. Technically they don't communicate with the urethra like the diverticulum does. Uh, another possibility uh, for confusion are, are vaginal wall cysts. Uh, the vaginal wall cysts typically are freely mobile. They tend to be more in the mid to lateral aspect of the vagina and not so much suburethrally. Uh, and finally there are certainly uh, uh, vaginal leomyomas uh, these are more firm masses and again uh, tend not to be so suburethrally uh, but located in, anywhere in the vaginal walls. Finally, as, as in testing uh, with these uh, uh, complaints, uh, a good place to start is a urinalysis uh, and, and maybe a culture if needed. Um, Cystoscopy, uh, most likely, uh, and not to, and part of that is with a urethroscopy, uh, will certainly be of value. Uh, you may or may not need urodynamics, uh, and finally imaging. And in talking uh, about imaging, you can use such things as avoiding cystourethrogram, a double balloon catheter, like a Tratner catheter. Uh, the Tratner catheter, uh, if you're not familiar, basically has a Foley catheter with a balloon on two ends and that catheter um, can be blown up and then uh, inject uh, radio opaque material to see if this radio opaque material will flow into the diverticulum. 
probably though the most uh, uh, useful uh, in the uh, used to be thought of the ultrasound, but today uh, the the ultimate for diagnosis would be that of the MRI. This MRI also allows to see if this is truly a cystic or more of a solid component. Certainly when you start to think about solid, you have to worry about cancer. Uh, probably the most common urethral cancer would be that of an adenosarcoma or the second most common, probably transitional uh, cell carcinoma. Uh, again, when you're doing your MRI, uh, be careful that um, there are no metallic foreign bodies um, and certainly uh, be careful for such things even as a pessary. Uh, pessaries may or may not contain a metal uh, component. As far as classification, I know that we all look for ways to kind of decide is this a simple or does it uh, tend to be more complex and circumferential. Uh, typically there's only one classification which I'm not so sure that is universally used but it does exist. It's called the LNSC3 classification and basically the L and S stands for location, the number, the size, while C3 represents the configuration the communication and continence. Finally, with treating the diverticulum, uh, certainly as always, conservative therapy is, is the way to begin. This may be treated symptomatically uh, with such as a, a drainage or antibiotics. Uh, certainly if the diverticulum is distal, you may want to perform a spence procedure, which is basically a marsupialization. However, generally, uh, diverticulum are best treated with surgery. At time of surgery uh, you certainly want to remove the diverticulum and if there is concomitant urinary incontinence this may need to be treated now or later. Um, if it's treated at the time, fascial sling may be the best choice. If it is treated uh, in stage procedures and you prefer a synthetic mesh, the synthetic mesh may be better staged until a later time. I think when you start to think about surgery you need to think of the risk. Certainly a urinary tract infection can occur. Stenosis uh, of the urethra with post-op voiding dysfunction. A urinary incontinence uh, um, post-operatively as, as well as a recurrence of the diverticulum itself along with other things such as scar tissue or changes in sexual function may also be a possibility. In summary, I think that making the diagnosis of diverticulum is probably uh, uh, the toughest decision. Once you've made that diagnosis, you may uh, look towards these tests uh, to help you uh, in your decision making. Most likely the MRI will be of most value. A final note, if the patient is pregnant, you may want to uh, refrain from any aggressive therapy until after delivery. Uh, and then lastly, certainly you want to uh, avoid missing uh, malignancy, so ensure that uh, you have properly evaluated. Well, that concludes this for the uh, suburethral diverticulum. Thanks.